Good day everyone and welcome to today's Living Life. Now in some sense, I would have much preferred uh, to be able to start at chapter 12 for my Living Life recordings, the four that I have to do, um, rather than chapter 11 that was kind of technical and a little bit confusing and difficult to understand because, you know, chapter 12 begins with, you know, one of the most famous and well-known passages in the New Testament. And then it talks about spiritual gifts, um, you know, something that I teach, something that I'm passionate about, uh, and I even, you know, run courses on as well. Now, but um, you know, I'm also glad that I have the opportunity to just do the beginning of chapter 12, uh, having gone through chapter 11, because, you know, even for myself, I have a better understanding of what those two, you know, very well-known verses are. And I hope uh, that you will also leave with that same kind of understanding uh, and blessing as well. So let's read the passage and then we'll continue. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Now, chapter 12, verse 1, begins with the word, therefore. It's an unusual word to start an entire chapter with, and that's because the word therefore means whatever comes after that word, therefore, is linked to whatever came before that word, therefore, which is chapter 11. So, chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, one of the most well-known verses, is, you know, completely linked with chapter 11 and what we discussed for the last three days. Now, um, it, it requires us to have a good understanding of what came in chapter 11. Um, and, you know, in a summary, um, you know, the simplest way that I can put it is that when we, and by when, when I say we means Gentiles, Jews, whatever, just we, us, people, humanity, that uh, when we should all have been rejected, uh, when we all rejected God, God chose to do everything possible to accept us, to, for us to be acceptable to Him, that, um, that everything was done through His Son, Jesus Christ, His sacrifice. And so in light of this, it is no longer about being a Jew or a Gentile. Um, no one has any right to pride or exclus exclusivity uh, to, the sal to salvation or to God. And because it is God who saves, salvation comes from God and it has nothing to do with, you know, what we have done or our identity as, you know, Jews or Gentiles, Koreans, Americans or Australians that we uh, worship because we are saved. And that is the natural flow and response that we are going to see today. So therefore, or so what? So what? What happens? And the question is, what is our response to this? What is our response to salvation? And uh, verse 1 and 2, it says to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. For this is your true and proper worship. 
The NIV says true, um, or um, the NIV also says spiritual act of worship. Now, different uh, versions of the Bible, let me just kind of run down for you. In place of true and proper spiritual act of worship, King James says reasonable act of worship. Um, Another version says true. Another version says offered by mind and heart. And another uh, says intelligent. This is your intelligent act of worship. And this last one is something that, um, you know, the commentary that I was reading uh, was pointing out and that really spoke to me. And let me read to you uh, what he says. It says, we give ourselves to God as his sacrifices when we understand his grace and its place in our lives. We offer ourselves not ignorantly like animals brought to slaughter, but intelligently and willingly. This is the worship that pleases God. God. Right, so when he says that to offer ourselves as living sacrifices, we're not animals, right? We are created in the very image of God. And so we come to him intelligently, we come to him, come to him all uh, completely willingly. And um, the, the, the place of worship in our lives um, is completely linked to our salvation that we have in him. Now, this reminded me of Luke 17, Luke chapter 17, verses 7 to 8, where it says, Will any of you who has a servant plowing or keeping sheep say to him when he has come in from the field, Come, um, come at once and recline at the table with me, the master. Verse 8 he uh, continues, says, Will he not rather say to him, the servant, prepare supper for me and dress, prop- dress properly and serve me while I eat and drink and afterward you will eat and drink, as in the servant has their place, right? And as the master, you know, the the master does not call to the servant, hey, enjoy all the same things that I am enjoying. And so worship that is intelligent, worship that is understood is sober-minded, and worship needs to be correct, as in proper. You know, so uh, the first version that I read is also correct. Worship, we must worship God properly you know, in correct manner, in correct form. And, you know, what is that form? You know, what does that look like? And that looks like service, yeah? The default posture of a servant um, is to be in service. And Christians are called to be servants. So our default posture is to be serving, is to be in service. A servant understands their place, a servant who understand and who at the same time while serving is full of joy because our master is not a taskmaster. Our master is not evil. Our master is not cruel, but our master is actually a good father, a loving father and creator. The purpose of spiritual gifts that Paul you know, begins to talk about is for us to love and to serve the body of Christ. That is it. It is not to serve ourselves. It is not for us to build our reputation or build a career around. The only career that spiritual gifts are meant to help build is the career of a servant. Right? That is our default posture. And so spiritual gifts um, are like salvation. It is completely from God. And I want to read to you the definition, you know, as I close, the definition of spiritual gift according to Eric Rees, who um, wrote a book called S-H-A-P-E, Shape, that I recommend, uh, that I have recommended before and I recommend you read about spiritual gifts as well. He says, spiritual gifts are God-given special abilities to every believer by the Holy Spirit to share love and strengthen the body of Christ, to serve. That is the purpose of spiritual Um, spiritual gifts. So, is your worship a living sacrifice that is holy and pleasing? Is your worship that is loving to the body and also serving the body as well as a living sacrifice? That is the question for us today. So once again, I remind um, all of us that we worship 
because we are saved. If we were not saved, we do not worship God. We do not have to worship God. And we worship as servants, as in that is our place. And we need to worship properly. We need to worship correctly. And to do that means worship is given. Very often, I think sometimes in the church, a lot of people think worship is something that we do to receive. But worship is something that we offer to God. We offer ourselves in worship as living sacrifices so that He may be pleased. And that means we need to be loving of the body and also serving the body as well. That is the beginning of worship that comes from the overflow of salvation as well. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word uh, that teaches us and reminds us why we worship and also how to worship you. I pray uh, that your sons and your daughters, uh, members of the body all over the world, God, today will be reminded uh, of why we worship, just giving you thanks and glory um, and praise for saving us. And as we worship you, we love the body, we serve the body, and we build up the body with the spiritual gifts, uh, with the abilities that you have blessed us and anointed us with, Lord. So may you use us as your servants. We want to be good servants of you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.